the Blues team named this morning. How did we see it? It's what I expected, especially with uh, Mitchell Moses picked at halfback. Yeah, big, big decisions, guys, as far as the debutants, Reese Robson and Stefano mm. Utukamano. Big yeah. calls. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, the Dragons have finally decided that Shane Flanagan will take over the Red V as head coach from next season. NRL Chief Reporter James Hooper is at St George. Lee's Club Hoops, how did it unfold today? Evening, Braith. Well, it's been described as a circus, a shambles and a drawn-out process, but finally the Dragons board has been able to unanimously agree that the best man available for the job in terms of being the Red V head coach in 2024 is Shane Flanagan. Now, the deal's not done yet. What happened today was the Dragons' eight-member board met here at Jubilee Oval. Of course, this is St George Dragons Leagues Club. Uh, they voted unanimously that Shane is absolutely the best candidate for the job. Alas, the front office are still dotting the I's, crossing the T's and negotiating behind the scenes, aiming to actually get what in all likelihood will be a three-year deal done. Now, this is a huge coup for the Dragons. They haven't had a Premiership winning coach at their club since Wayne Bennett signed in 2009. Flano fits that bill. We all remember he turned the porch lights off with the Cronulla Sharks in 2016. Prior to that, 31 years ago, he actually also had some history with the Red V in their ranks. He started his playing career with St George Dragons. He scored the match-winning try in the 1985 under-23s grand final, made his first-grade debut for the club in 1987 and ultimately played three first-grade games for the Dragons. Now, as we touched on, the only thing with the St George Illawarra front office is we have seen them stuff deals up in the past. We all remember it was only a fortnight ago. Jason Riles was apparently across the line at the 11th hour. He got cold feet. There was a backflip and a pirouette. The deal didn't end up getting done. We are led to believe that the Flanagan deal will be done. It should be finalised in the next 24 to 48 hours. But as we know, Braith, when it comes to the Red V management and their front office, no deal gets done with a dash of quick on it. Get on your hoops. Great work. <laughs> there he is, James Hooper, with the news that Shane Flanagan appointed the new head coach of the St George Illawarra Dragons. Now, he gave us uh, here at Fox League a statement. I received the great news today that the St George Illawarra Dragons board have unanimously supported my appointment as head coach starting in 2024. The details will be finalised over the next few days and once completed, I will supply a detailed press release. It would be an understatement if I didn't express my excitement of being appointed head coach of the St George Illawarra Dragons. Thank you for the overwhelming support. Uh, as Hoops just alluded to, it's been a little bit of a circus trying to find the head coach of the Dragons. It was supposedly going to be Jason Rolls only a few weeks ago. They've gone for experience. Do we like it? Look, it's, um, it's a pity it's taken this long. They could have made this decision last year and they, they probably would have had Flanagan on board right now. For the club at the moment, it's probably not the choice I would have made, I'll be honest with you, but for the club at the moment, having an experienced coach with his credentials to take over, it is a good fit. Uh, I understand it'll be a minimum three-year deal for yeah. Shane Flanagan and to the point where those terms are being nutted out as we speak, guys, I, I think we could have a... A decision and a contract as far as a contract signed by the end of tonight. Um, absolutely, Shane Flanagan's the right man for, thi for this job because this is an incredible job as far as rebuilding is concerned. And I, I, it must be said that, you know, Dragons fans need to understand that Shane Flanagan coming in, is he, he can't be seen as this great panacea of fixing the entire club because this is a, a club riddled with dysfunction. They are divided at board level and a coach coming in can't be expected to fix the world's problems as far as St George Illawarra are concerned. However, it's a, it's a very good start. He has experience, he knows grassroots rugby league and this is a rich nursery mm. club uh, and he knows how to build a pathways and succession plans and, mm. uh, and given his success from bottom to top, yep. perfect appointment. Yeah, I think he's the right man for the job. Obviously, uh, he was at the Dragons when I was there, um, come back for a little while, what he did at Cronulla... Um, and I think the fans needed an answer. And I think with his experience and what he's done, I think he, it's a big job. 
I don't know whether he can do the whole job, but I'm certainly certainly sure that he'll do a good job. Is there a succession plan? Is Dean Young going to be his assistant? Is Flanagan there, I suppose, to coach long term? Mm. Or are they looking for him just to kind of lead the way until Dean steps in? Yeah, look, Braith, um, as I said, I believe it'll be minimum three years for Shane. In that contract and through this negotiation phase with Shane, there's been no suggestion that, Shane, you must put Dean Young on board with you. And so, therefore, Shane's been able to go about this contract phase negotiation with, with freedom. There's no pressure from board. You've got to put this guy on. You've got to do this. However, in saying that, Dean Young and Shane Flanagan get on. They worked together previously when Dean Young was the interim coach of the Dragons. They're both defensive-minded coaches. And it wouldn't shock me mm. if Dean did come back in an assistant role. And then, naturally... There could be a process of Dean Young but taking over, but it's not I would being... imagine that Shane Flanagan, I, I think he's the right man for the job, experienced premiership winner. He, he's not going to come in and step into this role and just for three years. He's thinking no. long term. So, he, yeah. uh, you know, he, he's, he's not, not going to... He's not an old man. Well, exactly. Like yeah. he's, it's, it's, you're not talking about Wayne Bennett, who's in his 70s. You're talking <laughs> about a bloke that, what is he, 57 years of age? Mm. His intentions, you would imagine, mm. as Braith just no said, doubt. would be to come in and, and coach a decade. So Dean Young's got to ask himself... Does he want to sit behind Shane Flanagan mm. for the long term? Does he want to stay at the Cowboys? And potentially there will be other jobs come up within the next few months. Yep. Who knows? And you think his nose would be a little bit out of joint, wouldn't it? So they were going for rookie coaches. He was in the running with Rolls and Hornby. Yeah. And then now they've gone for mm. an experienced coach. So you think that he would just say, no, no, well, I'm happy up in North Queensland. Mm. I'll just stay here. If I'm going to be an assistant there and I'm not going to be the head job, wouldn't you stay where you're at? Yep. Yeah. We're out with Ben Hunt. Uh, we've spoken about this last week that if Shane Funny and got the job, supposedly he was going to remain or keep Ben Hunt in mm. the number seven jersey. Is that still the case? Yeah, everything, as far as I understand, that'll be the case. Um, so they will keep him then, Ben Hunt? Because there's think, speculation I around that. I still think it comes back to Ben Hunt, boys. I really mm. do. I think it comes back to Ben Hunt being in the last couple of seasons of his career, does he believe that the Dragons are on the upside to deliver what he is ultimately in the game to do, and that's win a premiership. He's got a contract. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I, I just don't get this. Like, he's, he's, he signed a contract to play for a club, yeah. not a coach. Yeah. Not if we make the finals. He, he signed a contract to, pl to play for the club. Mm. And in fairness, too, like, they've got some work to do on their salary cap because even though Ben Hunt, week in, week out, is their best player... The fact of the matter is they, they haven't played finals football, what, other than his, his first season yeah. at the club? Yeah. Th that's a good point Crawls makes. I, uh, I agree. The salary cap down there is a little bit bent out of shape. And it will be interesting to see how Flanagan comes in because, keeping in mind, he did a lot of the recruitment prior for, uh, to, to leaving to join Manly. So understands everyone's salaries, understands where the cap is at. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a real shake-up a real shake-up, and other players are tapped or long before Ben Hunt is. Is this season a write-off? Well, this, this season's been a write-off yes. since February when the board and management decided to make a call on Anthony Griffin and suggest to him that we may or may not go with you mm. beyond this season. From that very point, the entire season was a waste of time. And that, to Crawls' point, they should have made the call late last year, move on mm. and, and get, get this season underway with a new future for recruitment, for success on the field. Mm. And, and, and it just hasn't but, but happened. The, in saying that, you have to admit that in, the, in recent few weeks, there's been a change of enthusiasm within that team. You could see it up until the final few minutes against South, at least the other day. I know they were playing against a team that were missing a few, but... Mm. But there's, you know, there's, there's re renewed enthusiasm. And I, I just think it's too early in the season to say it's a write-off when mm. the competition is so close. They've proven that they can beat good teams. Why can't you this make a, a, a goal of, of making the eight? Well, the fans don't want to hear that either, right? No. Of course they don't. They don't want They're to sick that. of it. Should he start now, Flanagan? Well, he's, 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 he has a position at Manly, mm. so I, I don't know what the, the terms of that agreement are. It, I, it, it would be ideal, wouldn't it, Yeah. Look, to look. come in and take over? I think he's got the experience. Where we spoke about Jay, Jason Rolls recently, where he would need time to come in and get his feet under the table mm. and try and sort things out. Flanagan knows. Yeah. He knows what he knows. Mm. I'd want to get there as quick as possible. If I'm head coach, I wanted to... I'd have to get my fingerprints all over the joint because if there's a lot of work to do, the quicker you start, the better chance you've got to finish it. Yeah. Look, look, talking to Manly officials, all indications are that Shane feels a little indebted 
to the Seagulls as the way they've, they've helped him get his coaching career back on track and he would be more than comfortable sticking around to see them through to the finals this year.